everyone. My name is Omar Padre. And thank you so much for joining us for yet another exciting episode of this series called Secrets of Greatness. If you haven't already done so, please do click the subscribe button and the bell notification icon and do leave us a comment or two sharing your insights and learnings from this particular episode. So guys, today I have a very, very special guest with me today. All right. He is an exciting young cricketer who only became the fifth opening batsman for England to score a hundred on his debut. And that too against the powerhouse team India in Mumbai in 2016. Since then, he has gone on to represent his country, England, on 17 different occasions. So guys, please join me in welcoming the very elegant left-handed opening batsman for England, Keaton Jennings. Keaton, welcome to the show, buddy. Yes, man. Thank you very much for having me, Omar. How are you doing? Thank you so much for joining us. And I, Keaton, I know you are a very busy man, so I'm going to, uh, if I have your permission, let's dive right into the questions, if that's cool. No problem at all. No problem. Crack on. Great, great. All right, Keenan, so 2016, let's rewind back to four years ago. 2016, great year for you. You were declared as the uh, championship player of the year, right? And then immediately you got a call to the English cricket team against India. You scored a, an amazing composed 100 on debut. Yeah. That too in Mumbai, all right? One of the, one of the craziest of the biggest stadium. Our power city for India. Tell me, uh, talk to us a little bit more about that particular year and especially um, that innings against uh, India on debut. Yeah, look, I mean that year was a was a strange one in a sense. I mean there was uh, there was a lot of things that happened that year that were were quite freakish. Um, from uh, I mean certain guys sort of falling a run or two short of being the first person to a thousand runs, and then yeah. I got at the innings type of thing. So I was. There was a lot of things that year that, that I look back and they were quite freakish. Um, and I mean, for me personally, I think I got six or seven hundreds in that year um, in the championship. Um, I think it was about 1,600 runs. Um, so f from a performance point of view, it was, it was fantastic. But as a team, we ended up getting relegated that year, um, albeit through sort of financial issue. But it was, um, it was a bit of a weird one because you have the highs of a personal success, but the sort yeah. of low um, of being around a um, sort of side that's got into a little bit of turmoil mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and yeah I mean look flying into Mumbai was it was weird man because it was I was in Dubai at the time with the Lions mm -hmm. side which is the, the sort of B team yeah um, and I was with a man called uh, uh, Andrew Flower um, mm -hmm. Andy Flower um, and he um, he basically told me I was up, um, and basically I left on two or three days later, flew into Mumbai, went straight into a, um, into a function, trained the next day, trained the day after that, and then played, played, the, first, or played the fourth test match of that series, so my first test. Um, so there was no real time to sort of sit and think about um, it was the irritation or the pressure bubble of international. Yeah. It was literally getting in and, and going about your work. So how did you... Uh, so you didn't really didn't really have any time to absorb what exactly is happening because apparently as you said things happen really really quickly yeah but now you're four years later reflecting back on those moments on that innings how do you how do you feel looking back and that too in india against a team led by the great virat kohli what were your what were the emotions going on when you came out to bat and you know went about doing your business yeah look it's it's a little bit surreal actually because you you walk out of Iowa to, it's sort of the coliseum of um of a cricket ground it's massive it's high it's big concrete um and i think we were sort of uh, must be about 50 or 60 for none um at the yeah. time and i think judaja was on and Cody mm -hmm. turned around to the crowd and like sort of started pumping him up as went absolutely ballistic and like i remember looking at i think it was cookie at the time and yeah, I, I, like, I was just like, this is incredible. It's absolutely amazing. Um, so experiences like that that are, I suppose, so rare um, yeah. that you only really appreciate once you're on the field. Um, but, uh, I mean, just the whole game, I think mean, we fielded for 220 overs in that game, mm -hmm. which is like, I mean, we fielded for like two and a half days type of thing. Yeah. And then Penn is renowned for being sort of 40 degrees and 
80% humidity. So we filled it again for another 230 overs, whatever it was. So it was from a series point of view, it was, it was really hard and taxing. Um, mm-hmm. But from my point of view, it was, it, it was a fantastic um, sort of first exposure to, to yeah. international cricket and, 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 and actually what international cricket is about. And, w- and what were your uh, initial um, learnings from that particular innings only? Test this international cricket is a piece of cake. What was what was the fuss about? <laughs> or <laughs> I think at, at the time I probably didn't appreciate the um, not the magnitude of what I had actually done, but there was uh, just actually how special it was mm-hmm. uh, because you you go into an environment that is so high pressure and is so hard. Yeah. Uh, well, I think at the time you don't quite um, realize sort of what you've achieved. Yeah. I think maybe in hindsight at that time. Uh, I could have looked back and maybe appreciated a little bit more. Mm. Uh, and since then, it's it's been hard work to to try and um, I suppose get some sort of momentum playing international cricket because it is it's hard. It's it's yeah. the tough environment to play um, cricket in. Um, guys all around the world know what they're doing uh, from a skills point of view, and you being exposed to 50 million people in in a day's play, so you yeah. the pressure of it is is really intense. Absolutely. I think that it, it, at that stage, at the international stage, the pressure that you guys face is very, very different. I mean, it's it's really unheard of in yeah, other yeah. facets of life, right? So um, that's amazing that you got you you have that opportunity to express your craft at such a grand level, right? So, Keaton, right after that dreamy debut against India. Um, immediately there was a little bit of a you can say crash landing right you had you didn't really have a great uh, um, summer of 2017 um, Mm -hmm. where um, the South Africans came home to England to play a series and um, after a few low scores you eventually got the axe right looking back now at that time um, is there when when you reflect back on those on, on, on that journey between your debut to the time, um, you know, you got the axe. Yeah. What, what are those, some of the lessons learned when you, when you look back? What factors led you to that particular downfall? Um, look, I think that there was probably a, a combination of things at that time for my failure or, or success. Mm-hmm. Um, I had errors that I couldn't really iron out mm-hmm. um, in the middle of a series. Four back-to-back series is pretty much uh, four back-to-back test matches. Um, so there wasn't time to go away, work on your game, and come back. Yeah. Um, but uh, at the same stage, I maybe wasn't um, sort of I hadn't put the strategies in place uh, to cope mentally with the mm. um, sort of of international cricket. Um, and and it's hard. It's it's an environment that you that's so surreal. You go from playing county cricket in front of a couple of thousand people to playing in front of fifty million, and the international exposure of um sort of television um and all the rest of it it's it's it, it makes it really hard work and intensity yeah. level of waking up in the morning and seeing yourself on the tv um <laughs> it, it's, it's quite surreal yeah. um people are speaking about you to get dropped on the tv and it, it's not saying that that you're used to um mm. and i think obviously you get exposed from a from a playing point of view you do get used to it um and you, you sort of put little strategies in place um I remember at the time I was reading a lot of social media. Ah, okay. I was reading a lot of comments, a lot of news articles, um, and almost getting caught up in the um, the fast pacedness and the pressure of that that sort of world. Um, where since then I've sort of slowly put little things in place of not reading the news, um, especially mm-hmm. around sort of time, um, not being on Twitter, for example, um, just just to try and. I suppose different people react in different ways yeah. um, to, to information. I'm quite a, I wouldn't say I'm sensitive, but I'm, I'm the kind of bloke that um, I do take things to, to heart and I do mm-hmm. um, take things personally at times as well. Um, so I just don't expose myself to, to that sort of negative comment because I get more right. than a negative from my seven or eight year old nephew when, when he tells me how rubbish I was. So, uh, but that's, that's just the way it is. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong about it, right? Everybody would react in a different way. You, you, you said, you know, and at that point when you were really, um, when you got into that international arena, it was all very sudden, right? You said that earlier. 
And at that point, you didn't really get a chance to create those sort of strategies, mental strategies for yourself to cope with that kind of pressure and yeah. what happens or even strategy, uh, any kind of contingency plan in case of failures. Um, now, if you were to look back, you said one thing you would definitely do is, you know, if, if you were to go back, you would turn off your social media, get off Twitter and not look at the external environment. Yeah. And that's fantastic, right? Not worrying about what the outsiders feel about you and how your game. It's more important how you look at yourself, how you are improving on your game. What's your mental, um, mental focus at, right? So yeah. that's one thing you definitely, um, I think you're stressing on the fact that that's one thing you would change. Any other strategy from a mental perspective of the game? Because of course we can we can have another whole show on the technical aspect of of yeah. cricket that you we all can improve on. Um, but what about the mental strategies other than just getting off social media and um, blocking out that noise from the outside? So f funny enough, the, the more I've sort of been exposed to the pressures of international cricket, I found that having a life or having interests outside of cricket has really sort of helped me to, hmm. I suppose, relax is one thing, but feel stable. Um, mm -hmm. For me, I am quite a tense guy. I'm a bit of a perfectionist in the way I go about my work. Um, yeah. So, I mean, things like, so studies, for, for example, I signed up to finish my, my degree end of last year. And I felt since then in my life, I felt very stable. Um, Connecting with family is a big one for me. Um, just, just to keep a sense of perspective, a sense of normality in and around right. a, a performance environment. Because I think at times, especially when you go higher up the tree, I think whether you, not that I've been exposed to much business, but whether you're in business or, mm -hmm. or sport, higher up the tree you go, the more pressure you're going to face. And I think you need that Absolutely. And the outlet of, to be able to actually go, well, no, that's my job. Um, it doesn't affect, actually, it doesn't make me a bad person. So getting no runs today, it doesn't make me a bad person. Actually, I've just done my job poorly or yeah. quite often, somebody else might have just been better than me today. Right. It's, it's that, um, it's being able to humanize yourself a little bit, right? It's the ability yeah. to feel a little bit more human in the sense that, hey, it, I'm not just a cricketer. I'm also a son. I'm also, uh, you know, uh, a brother or something yeah. and a cousin, a friend and being more human in those aspects to create to re overall, I think, um, take that pressure off, off your shoulders. Yeah. Uh, that pressure of performing consistently because in the sporting arena, sporting arena especially is very, very brutal, right? You perform one day, you're at the pedestal level. You per don't perform yeah. the next day. You know the media is right after you, and it's 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 harsh. It's really really harsh. So having those mechanisms, and I feel you're uh, you're talking about is creating that sort of like an environment around you, a support system of friends, family who can who can be there with you to help you create uh, help you be strong mentally. Completely. Right? Awesome, awesome. I love I love hearing that. So what? Uh, now, going back to, you know, that era, uh, that period in your life where, um, you know, you started, uh, you got the axe, you started um, interact, uh, you started uh, doing things in, um, um, you know, uh, doing things even outside of cricket, even yeah. though you are an intense person and you are a perfectionist at the end of the day, you still got yourself involved in other um, areas of life. Yeah. Um, what else did you do from your lifestyle perspective or your routine perspective um, that, you know, you feel helped you make a comeback in 2018? Because you made a very good comeback in 2018. And uh, what, 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 let, what factors do you think played a role in getting you back into the team? Um, uh, so I, I think it was that initial... Um, feeling stable, spending time with family, getting that perspective of mm -hmm. being happier outside of cricket that allowed me yeah. to um, go into the field feeling happy and actually being able to, to perform at a, at a happy sort of love um, sort of area. Um, yeah. and, and I think when you, when you aren't happy, I think as, as, as a cricketer especially, when you aren't happy or as a sportsman, your performance is going to be slower. Mm -hmm. 
hampered by a lot of things. Um, so I, I think 2018 for me, I was, I was a lot happier. Um, there were certain sort of technical changes that I'd made. Um, but it's, it's a funny one because there's, there's always things you find out along the line. And I think the, I'd like to think my best years are still ahead of me because of my age, yeah. my fitness level. Yeah. Um, but from a, from a routines point of view, I mean, there's, there's certain areas where during 2017, I would, um, in the test match, go back home, hit more balls, um, and train. Mm. Um, train harder. Yeah. To, to try and get myself feeling good. Um, where in actual fact, what I should have done is go home, have a beer, relax and take the pressure mm. off. My um, so I think it's, it's, it's about knowing yourself and knowing your way. Um, right. and, and, and so for me, I, I probably hadn't worked out the best way for me to go about it. There was a little bit of youth as well. Um, initial exposure to that sort of pressure environment. Um, right. but I, 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 I needed to almost take the pressure off myself, but I was going harder and I kept pushing against that sort of pressure barrier. Mm. Um, I think now maybe in hindsight, maybe I will be exposed to that pressure again, but I think I may make slightly different choices. Right. And that's so important. I, I love what you, what you talked about finding your own way, understanding your own um, methods for coping with that pressure and finding your um, happy place. Right. Yeah which is why I think self-love, self-care has become so important today. If, and as they say, right, when you're in an airplane, they say, put your mask on first and then you can only take care of another person, right? Yeah. You got to take care of your own self first. Only then you will, you will be able to take care of others around you, right? Yeah, but And that's the whole... For me, sorry to interrupt you, but I think it's, for me, it's also about knowing how to take care of yourself as well. So it's about yeah. knowing... Because I think there's times where I thought at the time I was trying to take care of myself and trying to do the best thing for me, where in actual fact, mm. I probably didn't quite understand where I was and sort of what I was. Um, and potentially that step back off myself would have made me perform right. at a higher level. Right. Um, I think that knowing yourself and knowing what makes you tick is a massive part of performance at any level. And I think that's true in whether you're playing cricket or whether you're running a company or yeah. whether you're teaching that aspect, what you just said is self-awareness. Self-awareness okay. is so important. Um, I was watching that uh, series, uh, that documentary, um, the test on Amazon. Um, oh, yeah. And I realized about what I realized about Stephen Smith, the um, Australian cricketer is that yeah. he is an intense guy. He's 27, uh, 24 seven. He's just switched on about cricket. So yeah. his way of going, if he gets in, if he hasn't had enough practice enough, he, if he hasn't hit enough balls, um, he will not feel good going into and going into the field. So he, yeah. he needs to be 24. He needs to be switched on 24 seven. Whereas for other folks, uh, perhaps for yourself and a few other guys in that documentary um, that I read about, for them, it's important to, okay, I've hit enough balls. Now I need to go back, just put my feet up, relax a little bit, get into a, a calm and relaxed headspace, and then go into the into, um, into play day next day, right? Yeah. So that com it's, there's, no see there's no cookie cutter answer to, okay. to that question because, about the method of preparation. Okay. Because, hey, Keaton, uh, Keaton performs best when he has relaxed before the day, whereas Steven Smith might, might just need to play, um, you know, 10 times more balls and, uh, and be switched on completely. Yeah. So it's, it's two different methods. And I love the fact that you say, find your own way, right? Find your mm -hmm. own, what makes you tick. And that's yeah. important. Um, anything in particular you would do or you would uh, um, recommend to the listeners, especially the young ones, and how do you even find out your way? Is there any technique? Is there any uh, method of going about finding your way? Um, I think knowing yourself is a big one. So knowing how you sort of take those days where, for example, I need to sort of take a step back and just relax in the morning. There's mm -hmm. also days where you feel a little bit half asleep and you need to, excuse me, you need to pump yourself up a little bit. Um, so knowing your mood. Um, especially as a sportsman, you need to know sort of where you are on that day. If you're a little bit sleepy or you're too awake yeah. or you just where you are. 
Um, but then uh, we always talk about sort of needs and, and sort of wants. Um, mm. And where as a sportsman, you need to do something. Um, there's also times where you want to do something. So in the sense of there's days where you need to go to the gym or you need to go for a run or you need to hit balls. You may not want to, but that's what you need to do in order to um, put the time in your legs or to hit the balls and actually work on areas of your game. Um, but then there's also times where you need to understand that your energy levels may be at a certain level, whether it's high or low. You may want to do something or may want to relax, but you need to sort of tie that in with what you need to do. Right. Um, so I think for, for the young guys, I think it's work out actually what you need to do. Um, obviously, always do, not necessarily do more, but make the, the quality of your work good. Because um, mm -hmm. train or study for 25 hours a day, but at the end of the day, if you don't work in the correct fashion or at the correct level, right. uh, your level of productivity is not going to be correct. Work, work smart rather than just working hard, right? That's, and, I, and I like how you say it's um, reflecting and looking at what you need to do versus what you want to do. And that's something I think any, all of us can um, take a few hours in our, out of our, on our weekend or something and just write down, you know, based on what your goals are, what are those things that you need to do versus what are those things you want to do? And throughout the rest of you and take it day by day and yeah. listen to your body, which is another thing you, you said, right? Like mm -hmm. listen to what you, your body is telling you and assess it against that list of needs versus wants and Completely. prioritize your actions based on that framework. So that, I love that. I'm, I'm glad you, I'm glad you shared that. And that's something I don't think it can just be applied in the, in the, in the world of sports. I think it can be applied across all different um, in all different careers. And, yeah, completely. Uh, the thing is, I'll, so I'll relate it to, to sort of the studies I'm doing now at the moment. So I'll, I'll sign up to do yeah. it. Um, I was actually going to ask you about that anyway. <laughs> so go ahead. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we'll come to, so it was, it's been a funny sort of six months and there's days where so I was finishing off the, my business degree um, mm -hmm. the last sort of six months. And there's times where you come away from a training mm -hmm. session or, I mean, we went to, to India for a couple of weeks. Um, yeah. And I mean, you have some hot days in Mumbai, or like 35, 40 degrees. It's sweaty. Ooh. It's hot. Um, but you, I need to do work. I have to get certain assignments and you have to do something. Man, I really not want to, but that's the requirement of the day yeah um, and uh, i think for me it, that in a way took the pressure off my cricket because mm -hmm. it would, allowed me to not channel a level of perfectionism somewhere else but allowed me to um get a little bit of perspective um as to where i should push some energy um, mm -hmm. and then when i got a cricket this is fun it's like hitting cricket balls it's fun it's actually what i really want to do yeah and, instead of going to net and really sort of overstressing and overplaying every sort of minute detail. Absolutely. And, and that's, I, I love the fact that, you know, you somehow found this other channel to uh, channel to divert your energy towards, which is going and getting your business degree. And now I think last time you and I, we were chatting, Keaton, you said that you have enrolled yourself for an MBA program starting soon. Right. And I think that is so, so admirable because, you know, a lot of people, during the during the, these turbulent times of COVID, um, yeah. they're just sitting home and just playing a waiting game. Whereas you, I think you have done a proactive, you have taken proactive steps to um, indulge not just in your training but also in uh, in your education. Um, so tell me a little bit more about why did you decide on doing an MBA right now? In terms, in, because some people might say, "Hey, Keaton." Why aren't you putting 110% of your time and energy towards your cricket? Or do you believe, Keaton, that your studies or the um, or MBA is somehow going to help you in your cricketing skills? So look, I mean, there's no there's going to be no direct correlation between me doing any studies and my technical performance from a cricket point of view. I think that's mm. um, it, it. Just doesn't work like that. You still got to put time in in the nets, and um, yeah. that's that's just the way it is. But I think from a mental point of view, because of how I am um, from a perfectionism point of view, um, when I've got time on my hands and I've got uh, sort of too much I can do or too much mm. thing I could do instead of like, actually I'm busy. So I've got to just work. 
um, I'll have a net session and then I'll come back from nets and I'll write notes and I'll watch footage mm. and it becomes all consuming. And I've found that um, having studies or having something outside of cricket has allowed me to um, get a little bit more perspective right. um, and allowed me to go into my work environment in a much happier state and right. in a much more enjoyed state that I can actually play and love what I'm doing. Um, but love then that. That, the fact that it's an MBA, it's, a sphere of um, sort of the world that I want to go into after cricket. Um, so cricket's going to end at some point. That's just the way it is, unfortunately. Of course. Uh, but it's look, uh, maybe it's too early in my sort of commercial career to be doing mm-hmm. it in the same stage. It's um, when I look at a CV and look at packaging together a sort of career path. Mm-hmm. Uh, education is never wasted, I believe. Absolutely. So to, to get that qualification under you, it shows that there's some sort of knowledge around a business world and managing yourself, your time, um, yeah. and, and a know-how. Um, so look, it's definitely a path I want to go into after cricket. Absolutely. And I, and I completely agree. And, um, uh, you know, it, it, it's not only going to teach you the technical know-hows of running a business, but you yourself will realize and that um, so many more intricate details about your own self as you go through the process, as you yeah. go through the journey of doing an MBA or better, what, whatever degree you're, you're doing. And as you okay. said, um, education is never wasted. An interesting anecdote about what you also mentioned that, you know, when you are doing your, um, you go for your net practice, you know, your craft, you're practicing your craft, you come back and you do a little bit of reading, you do, uh, you know, work on some assignments and that helps you, uh, you know, uh, you, it helps you relax and puts you in a different frame of mind in a happy state and so that you can go back and practice your craft again. Completely. Albert Einstein actually used to do that as well. For Albert Einstein, yes, he was a hundred and his craft was theoretical physics, right? We yep. all know that. He was 110% focused on that. But like you, he would take breaks and go and play the, uh, the violin. And yeah. for, like, uh, for him, it was that, that those moments where he would, um, you know, get himself outside of his zone of, uh, um, of his studies, of his uh, practice, of his craft, and go into another zone so that he can just calmly relax and then come back into his zone again. And that gave him better perspective. So I, I'm glad you brought that up that sometimes especially for students, the ones who are very intense, like myself, I also consider myself to be a very intense uh, person. <laughs> so, you know, um, it, it's, a, it's a great tip that you've suggested, like take those breaks and use it towards uh, something that you enjoy, whether it's reading, whether it's writing, mm-hmm. um, whether it's, uh, uh, whether it's uh, you know, dancing, I don't know, whatever that is. Do that and come back. But don't forget your o- overall overarching goal. All right. Don't let that go. I think at the end of the day, that's, that's essential. Yeah, completely. I think it also ties into to the sort of quality of work that you're doing. So for me, it's like I said, you can train for 27 hours a day, but the point is if your quality isn't good, you yeah. actually don't think from what you're doing. So like right. 2017, when I went back home and I'd hit more balls, the quality mm-hmm. was there and the better. Yes, it was there. And I was then giving time and hours and sweat and tears, but the quality of what I was doing probably wasn't the right level because I didn't have the perspective of, you know, you need the downtime, your energy you levels need, to be right. to quality of work. You're doing very good. Right. And there are different methods for in improving your quality of work. Right. I think um, each and every, that's why I always recommend working with a mentor, finding, finding a mentor or a coach for yourself who can help you and guide you and give you that essential feedback that you need in your life to be able to say, hey, this is, you know, the, these steps that you're doing towards your, towards your goal, they are probably not working out for you. It's, these are not the smart or the most efficient way of getting to your goal. Maybe there's a better way out there. So you always need somebody as a coach, as a mentor to address those points, to improve the quality of your work so that yeah. you are able to work, as you said, smarter rather than just work hard. Yeah, so, completely. Thanks. Thanks for sharing that. Um, Kaden, there, there are a lot of youth today who can learn so much, so much from you, from your journey, from your ebbs and flows, from your ups and downs that you have seen in your career. Um, 
what are some actionable tips for success that you would like to impart on the youth of today, um, regardless of what field they, of career they are in? Um, actionable tips. So, uh, look, I think for me, one of them you, so for me, I, I think as a, as, as a first off, it, it's got to be a sort of never say die attitude. Mm. Um, I think when, when times are tough or you face adversity, I think the ability to enjoy what you're doing and turn mm -hmm. up again the next day, um, to try and improve or try and work out a method of succeeding, um, I think is a skill. Um, mm -hmm. There's, there's too many times where as people we face adversity and we probably shy away because it, it is tough. And if we don't have that sort of goal or that sort of passion for what we're doing, we will just turn our back on it. Um, right. Just through, uh, it, so things like potentially if you, if you suck in a job you don't enjoy or mm. if you face adversity, I mean, there's been a lot of times where I've played cricket and you, you not necessarily doubt what you're doing, but the pressure becomes so great or the, mm -hmm. the intensity you're playing under becomes so big that you, you sort of, you need that never say die attitude to turn up, get out of bed when you really don't want to and, and actually put the work in. Um, and then I'd probably say, learn, learn, learn yourself. Um, learn yourself. Or learn about yourself, learn how you tick, um, what makes you tick, why it makes you tick. Um, because I think the quicker you learn about yourself, the more one, you can impact other people. Um, mm -hmm. Two, you can influence the way you react to situations. Um, so whether it's uh, in a business sense, in a sporting sense, under pressure, um, you, you know how you're going to react or you know how you're going to cope with those situations. Right. Um, and then probably the third one, as I've touched on, would be the, the quality of work. So mm -hmm. The uh, quality over quantity um, and keeping whatever you're doing concise and a good sort of quality of work in order to actually improve. Absolutely. I, I love that. I love all those three things. The first one, uh, the first one being, you know, find a way to motivate yourself to get out of, out of adversity, right? Find your motivation. Number yeah. two, know thyself, right? It's a, such, it's all the great philosophers all the uh, enlightened people in this world, in the past, in the history, and even in today's world, they all talk about knowing yourself. And we touched on that earlier in the episode as well, to understand your strengths and weaknesses, so that uh, which goes back to, which then ties into the third point, so that you can actually work smarter and not just work hard, right? And all yeah. those three things combined can be a great starting recipe for your success, regardless of what, um, you know, career path you have chosen for yourself. That's Indeed. awesome, man. That, Kiran, I love that. I love this. I love this conversation with you. You have shared some really amazing golden uh, nuggets with us, great pieces of wisdom. Um, I want to, you know, thank you from the bottom of my heart for coming onto the show and being, uh, you know, so generous with your time and inspiring me and inspiring a lot of the guests and the listeners who are listening to this particular episode. And I'm sure we all have learned a lot from you. So thank you so much. And before I sign off, you guys listening in, please, please, please do not forget to subscribe to this channel and share your comments, um, whatever you have learned in the comment section below with us. Kiran, with that, any last piece of uh, words of wisdom or anything that you want to share before we sign off? No, man, thank you very much for having me. I appreciate the time. I really appreciate it too, man. Thank you so much and chat soon. Definitely. Keep all that.